Welcome to 13 Cubed. In this episode, we're going to talk about Windows hibernation files. We'll start with the basics, as always, and then discuss the forensic implications of this artifact and how we can leverage it in our investigations. Hibernation files were originally introduced way back in Windows 2000, and later the same year in Windows Millennium Edition, better known as Windows ME. They were intended as an energy saving feature. They were located on the boot volume, typically the root of the C drive, in a file named hyberfill.sys, H-I-B-E-R-F-I-L dot sys. When a laptop's battery was critically low, the system could effectively freeze itself in time, writing the contents of RAM to disk and allowing the computer to power down without losing data. In a nutshell, for many years, that remained the basic functionality of this feature. That is, until new functionality was added, which drastically repurposed the original concept. In Windows Vista, a new feature called Hybrid Sleep was introduced. This would result in the creation of a hibernation file and subsequent transition of the system to a low power sleep. This ensured that data was not lost in the event of a power failure. In Windows 8, we got another new feature called Fast Boot, which was later renamed to Fast Startup in Windows 10. And those features aimed to drastically reduce the amount of time it took a system to boot. On the back end, this was actually accomplished by leveraging hibernation. In fact, upon Windows shutdown, kernel memory and background processes were frozen in time and included within the data written to hyberfill.sys. Upon boot, the data was thawed, not unlike resuming a system that had been put to sleep. Okay, so that's all well and good, but why do we as forensic investigators even care about hibernation files? What kind of data could be stored within? Well, how about Windows NTFS records, $i30 index records, registry-related data, browsing history, and a whole lot more? And perhaps most importantly, since a hibernation file is basically a full or partial dump of the contents of RAM at the time the file was written, even on a system that has been powered off, we may still be able to recover data that would have otherwise been volatile and lost. Now let's talk about the structure of hyberfill.sys. In Windows XP, Vista, and 7, the algorithm applied to compress hibernation files is called Express. In Windows 8 and later, the algorithm is Express Huffman, which is Express Compression plus Huffman Encoding, which is a bit more complex. If that sounds familiar, then you're probably thinking about prefetch files as they use the same algorithm. Later builds of Windows 10, starting around build 17.134, made more changes that resulted in the contents of the system registry hive not being included in the hibernation files created for Fastboot. Further changes to the hibernation process in Windows 10 followed, and tools scrambled to keep up. If the tool you were using was not completely up to date with the latest changes for the hibernation file you were analyzing, there was a good chance you would miss data. To make matters even more complex, the concept of slack space exists for hibernation files, as it does for other forensic artifacts we've covered in the past. Buried deep within hyberfill.sys, there might exist data from previous hibernations or even unallocated clusters unrelated to hibernation from the times of hyberfill.sys creation or expansion. So with all these more recent builds of Windows 10 and with Windows 11, we do have to temper our expectations a bit. These newer systems, particularly when running SSDs, which almost everything is nowadays, are just not going to provide us with as much data as we used to get when we were running on HDDs and with earlier versions of Windows. The good news though, is that there is still valuable data to be found. As of today, things have been relatively stable with regards to how the technology works. Hibernation Recon from Arsenal Recon, makers of the super popular Arsenal Image Mounter, is one of the most capable and mature analysis tools available today for parsing this artifact. In fact, many people use Hibernation Recon to simply get the active memory out of Windows Hibernation files so it can be passed to memory forensics tools like Volatility. In other words, they don't even use any of the other functionality related to the various types of Slack or NTFS metadata extraction. But should you need that capability, it's there for you. All right, so it should come as no surprise that we're going to hop over to a forensic analysis system and take a look at this software in action. We'll take it for a test drive and see exactly how to use it. So let's get started. 
So lucky for us, Arsenal Recon makes tools that, in my opinion, have very intuitive interfaces. They're pretty easy to use. As you can see, you're staring at a mostly blank window. There's nothing here, but don't worry, this area will populate as soon as we choose a file to process. So let's click on process hyperfill.sys. So when we click that, we'll be presented with a dialog and we'll of course choose the one right here on my desktop. So I will just double click on that and it will select it. Now we need to choose an output folder. So if I click on desktop and then click make new folder, I'll just create something here called output where the files will be stored once it's finished processing. I'm clicking OK, and as you can see, this is running. And I'll tell you, there's no video editing magic here. This is running in real time. Now, obviously, this is a smaller memory image, and the larger the image, the more time it will take. But it really is fairly quick. So as you can see, it is almost complete, being on step four of five. In just a moment, it will finish, and we'll be left with some output files that we will briefly take a look at. And there we go. It's complete. You can actually see result complete right here. So first, let's take a look at the output files that we can expect to be generated based on this list provided by Arsenal. Let's hit the highlights here. We won't cover every file listed, but as you can see, the first is activememory.bin, which as the description indicates, is active memory extracted from the hibernation file in an already decompressed and reconstructed state, which can help facilitate memory analysis via volatility or other tools. The next file I'll draw your attention to is near the bottom of the list, all slack.bin. A typical workflow for hibernation slack analysis would typically involve digging into all slack.bin for interesting things and then relying on the more granular slack related output files listed above as you're able to further isolate exactly where the items of interest originated. You'll also see two CSV files listed here. The names alone are pretty self explanatory, but INDX underscore I30 underscore entries dot CSV may be of particular interest to you, especially if you've watched the previous 13 cubed episode covering $I30 files. If you haven't, check it out as it'll be linked in the top right corner of this video. This file, as we alluded to earlier in this episode, contains $I30 data extracted from both active and slack space of NTFS INDX records present within the hibernation file. How cool is that? Now let's compare that to the actual output we got by opening the output folder and then the hybrec folder underneath that. And here are the files which match what we just saw in that list. At the top, we have activememory.bin, which in this case is approximately two gigs matching the amount of RAM in the system from which this hibernation file was obtained. And below that, the all important all slack.bin. Those are really the two most important files in this output, in my opinion. And then further down, we have those two CSVs we talked about, including the all important $I30 output. At the very top, there's a folder called raw slack chunks, which was also mentioned in that previous list. And that contains some chunk output data from the processing of the hibernation file. But that's really about it. I hope you see how easy it is to run hibernation recon against a hyberfill.sys file. Just point and click and wait a few seconds and there you go. So I'm going to leave this episode here for now. That really covers everything that I wanted to. As a recap, we talked about the history of hibernation files, and we talked about their current forensic value. Granted, they're not as important to forensics as they used to be back when we were dealing with more hard drives and older operating systems pre Windows 10, but there is still forensic value to be had, even when using Windows 10 and later and SSDs. And then in the second section of the video, we looked at one of the best tools you can find for processing hibernation files, which will be hibernation recon. If there is interest, let me know in the comments below and we can further analyze the data dumped from hibernation recon in a future 13 cubed episode. But that's all for now. So as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and I'll catch you in the next 13 cubed episode.